So hi everyone and a very good morning to all of you. Welcome back once again to another session of PIB 247. In today's class, we are going to talk about the PIB news from 15th to 17th of January 2023. And I hope your preparations for the upcoming RBI grade B exams are going well. Agar aapko koi doubt hota hai, to you can you guys can ask in the comment section or uh, on the telegram or on the Instagram. Okay, I am always link de raha hu. So there you guys can ask your doubt. But yes, abhi pichle do hafte se I am unable to uh, solve the doubts of the students on Instagram, especially because pichle do hafte se mere kuch chode baad exams chal rahe the, jiski wajah se main busy tha. But by the end of this weekend, I'll uh, uh, answer to all the doubts, right? So let's begin with the session and let's try to understand the very first question. Question number one: Which country hosted the first? Voice of Global South Summit 2023 to bring together the perspectives and priorities of issue shared by developing countries from Asia, Africa and South America which collectively known as the Global South. And that is why the summit is known as Global South Summit. Alright, what is the meaning of Global South? The Global South, South consisting uh, consists of the southern countries of the world, right? Uh, South America ki, Asia ki and Africa ki. All the southern countries of the world consist of global south. Okay. Now let's talk about the news. Then we will come back to the question. So it is India. It is India that has virtually hosted the first voice of global south summit of 2023 edition. And the inaugural address was delivered by the prime minister himself. Jo inaugural address tha usko kinone address kiya tha prime minister ne. Now this summit was organized to bring together the perspective and priorities shared by the developing countries from the region of Global South. Chitni bhi developing countries hai in the Global South, unke jo bhi perspective hai, unke jo bhi uh, issues hai, unko discuss karne ke liye this Global South Summit 2023 was hosted virtually by India, right? Now talking more about this news, so the theme was unity of voice, unity of purpose. That is the theme, do remember the theme, it is very important. More than 120 countries were invited by India, however, all the countries did not come up. Sare countries nahi hai out of this, but 120 countries were uh, invited, right? The inaugural and concluding sessions will be at the head of the state or the government level and uh, both of these uh, sessions will be hosted by the Prime Minister only, right? The theme of the inaugural leader session that was Voice for Global South for Human Centric Development while for the theme of concluding leader session it was Unity of Voice, Unity of Purpose which is also the overall theme of uh, this summit, okay? Now there were some special sessions, ministerial level like uh, there was a finance minister session, environment minister session, foreign minister sessions, energy ministers session with different different themes. Now you don't have to remember the themes of all these sessions. Just remember the overall theme of this summit, right? That is more than enough. Usse zyada aapko yaad rekhne ki zorat nahi hai. Then we have <coughs> health minister session, education minister session, commerce and trade ministers and foreign minister sessions with their respective themes. Now, again, I'm repeating, you guys don't have to remember the themes of all the sessions. You just have to remember the overall theme, which was unity of voice, unity of purpose, right? So that is all about this news. So which country hosted it? It was our Pyara Bharat, India. Option B is the correct answer. Moving ahead to question number two. Question number two, pe aa jate hai. India has committed to eliminate lymphatic filariasis, which is a disease caused by, uh, you know, roundworms, right? uh, which is a disease caused by roundworms and 90% of the disease, 90% of lymphatic filariasis cases across the world is caused by a parasite, which is known as Buscheraria bancrofti. Buscheraria bancrofti. There might be some other pronunciation, but Wisher area born Bancrofty, right? This is the name of the parasite which causes 90% uh, of the lymphatic filariasis across the globe. Now, India has committed <clears throat> to eliminate this disease by three years ahead of the global target. So, what is the target year to eliminate this disease in India? It is 2027, but the question is why it is in news? Because recently, a national symposium 
राइट अ नेशनल सिंपोजियम ऑन इंडिया रोड मैप टू एलिमिनेट लिम्फेटिक फिलेरिस टू प्लेस एंड इट वॉज चेयर बाई यूनियन मिनिस्टर ऑफ हेल्थ एंड फैमिली वेलफेयर डॉक्टर मनसुख मंडाविया राइट Now this symposium was organized to highlight India's progress in eliminating lymphatic filariasis. What India has been doing in eliminating the disease, right? To discuss key points of convergence for stakeholders, what things are required from the stakeholders to eliminate this disease, and to enhance the five-pronged strategy for the elimination of this disease. जो हमारी five-pronged strategy है उसको enhance करने के लिए this symposium. <coughs> was organized all right now as i already told you india has uh, committed to eliminate this disease by the year 2027 3 years ahead of the global target which means the global target to eliminate this disease is the year 2030 and this is india's five pronged strategy to eliminate the lymphatic filariasis number 1 multi drug administration campaign right मल्टी ड्रग एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कैंपेन ये ऑर्गेनाइज किए जाएंगे दीज विल बी ऑर्गेनाइज ट्वाइस अयर सिंक्रोनाइज विद नेशनल डिवॉर्मिंग डे विच विच इज ऑब्जर्व टू टाइम्स इन अयर टेंथ फेब एंड टेंथ ऑगस्ट और राइट देन अर्ली डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटमेंट इन दिस स्ट्रैटेजी वॉट विल हैपन देर विल बी एंगेजमेंट ऑफ मेडिकल कॉलेजेस फॉर स्ट्रेंथनिंग मॉर्बिडिटी मैनेजमेंट एंड डिजेबिलिटी सर्विसेस so with the help of early diagnosis and treatment morbidity cases will be controlled theek okay? hai number 3 integrated vector control with multi sectoral coordinated efforts to control the vectors which spreads these diseases right for intersectoral convergence with allied departments and ministries <coughs> and leveraging existing digital platform for this disease and exploring alternative Uh, diagnostic so these are the five pronged strategy of the country to eliminate this disease all right and do remember by the year 2027 we are going to eliminate this disease and therefore option d is the correct answer question number 3 the first g20 infrastructure working group meeting will be held in pune to discuss 2023 infrastructure agenda under india's g20 presidency its theme is financing <coughs> sorry cities of tomorrow inclusive resilient and sustainable which ministry is organizing this meeting so you just have to tell the name of the ministry everything else is already provided in the question jo ki humme discuss karna hai to this was the uh, uh, this will be the first g20 infrastructure working group meeting under india's g20 president and it will presidency and it will uh, take place in pune it will take place in pune and it will take place to discuss 2023 infrastructure agenda what will be the infrastructure agenda under india's g20 presidency so all those agendas will be discussed the theme will be financing cities of tomorrow inclusive resilient and sustainable it will be organized by department of economic affairs and under which ministry it works it works under the ministry of finance headed by nirmala sitaraman right it will be co-chaired by australia and brazil this is important do remember this the first meeting will be co-chaired by australia and brazil and it will be attended by 65 delegates across the g20 member countries theek okay? hai so this much is enough uh, from this news more than this is not required right so which ministry is this that's ministry of finance option a is the correct answer talking about question number 4 <clears throat> when will the first health working group meeting under india's g20 presidency be held pehli health working group meeting now please don't get confused between these all these meetings because there have been a lot of meetings which are taking place and which will take place in future under india's g20 presidency so be specific while uh, marking your answer right क्योंकि बहुत सारी मीटिंग्स हैं तो प्लीज डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज कीप ऑन रिवाइजिंग द थिंग्स कीप ऑन ट्राई टू डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन द डिफरेंट मीटिंग्स राइट सो दिस विल बी द फर्स्ट हेल्थ वर्किंग ग्रुप मीटिंग अंडर जी ट्वेंटी इंडिया प्रेसिडेंस एंड प्रेसिडेंसी एंड इट विल टेक प्लेस इन तिरुवनंतपुरम तिरुवनंतपुरम विच इज ऑफकोर्स इन केरला नाउ दिस विल बी हेल्ड टू अचीव कन्वर्जेंस इन डिस्कशन अक्रॉस वेरियस मल्टीलैटरल फोर्स विच आर एंगेज 
in health cooperation and work towards integrated action in simple words if i would try to explain this uh, sentence in simple words so basically what will happen all the health related issues in the g20 member nations will be discussed and the members will try to find out the solutions for all those health related issues uh, in the member countries okay that's it now these three these three are the priorities of india's g20 presidency uh, in the area of health services number one health emergencies prevention preparedness and response how we can prevent the health emergencies and how uh, how should we be prepared in the case of health emergency and how should we respond to the health emergencies access and availability to affordable medical counter measures like vaccine therapeutics and diagnostics and finally digital health so these are the three focus areas of india's g20 presidency in the area of health services this is very very important very very important you have to remember these three key areas okay <coughs> all right so so where this first health uh, working group meeting will take place so it will take place in thiruvananthapuram option b is the correct answer which is located in kerala question number 5 pe aa jate hain prime minister modi recently flagged off the world's longest river cruise which is named as mv ganga vilas so you have to identify the incorrect statement about mv ganga vilas and uh, during this flagging off of this mv ganga vilas prime minister modi also inaugurated tent city in varanasi tent city in varanasi and i hope you all know this uh, varanasi is the lok sabha constituency of the prime minister so these are the two things which have been launched this is the tent city and this is that beautiful mv ganga vilas bahut hi khoobsurat cheez hai ye mv ganga vilas it is a cruise ship you should uh, remember the name mv ganga vilas right so and both of these were launched at varanasi and varanasi of course is in uttar pradesh theek hai baba ki nagri jise hum bolte hain so about ganga vilas if i talk about ganga vilas so it is a luxury cruise as the name says and as the picture Uh, says it is a luxury cruise operated in partnership with private players by inland waterways authority of india theek hai ni so there is a role of private players uh, in the operation of this luxury cruise theek hai it will cover 3200 kilometers traversing five states up bihar jharkhand uttar pradesh and west bengal right so it will run through these five states and two countries as well एक तो इंडिया ऑफ कोर्स एंड दूसरा इट विल ऑल्सो गो टू बांग्लादेश राइट एंड द एंटायर विजिट विल बी ऑफ फिफ्टी वन डेज इट विल स्टार्ट इट्स जर्नी फ्रॉम वाराणसी इन यूपी एंड इट विल टेक इट स्टॉप एट वेरियस हेरिटेज एंड कल्चरल साइट्स ऑफ द कंट्री राइट एंड इट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल नेशनल पार्क रिवर घाट मेजर सिटीज लाइक पटना साहिबगंज कोलकाता ढाका एंड गुवाहाटी सो दीज Uh, some of these will be the stops of mv ganga vilas while traversing from varanasi to bangladesh theek hai bangladesh mein kahan tak dhaka tak now talking about this tent city so tent city to basically kuch nahi hai uh, bahut sare tents laga di hain ek particular jagah pe and they are calling it as a tent city so it has been conceptualized on the bank of river ganga to tap the potential of tourism in the region so what will happen is that it has been developed opposite to the city guards and it will provide the accommodation facilities and of course it will cater the tourist influx in varanasi jo bahut sara tourist aata hai varanasi mein usko cater karne ke liye unko accommodate karne ke liye this tent city has been established and it has been developed by varanasi development authority again in public private partnership mode right so this tent city is also has also been developed in ppp mode and that mv ganga vilas uh, will be operated in ppp mode theek hai now it will be remain operational from october to january every year so from july to september it will not be operated because of heavy rains jo ghat hote hain wahan pe bahut sara pani aa jata hai right so that's why from july to august which is the monsoon season uh, in that period the tent city uh, will not be under operation theek hai <clears throat> All right, so that is about this news. So now let's identify incorrect statement about MV Ganga Vilas. So it is operated by IWAI in partnership with private players. Absolutely correct. It will cover thirty two hundred kilometers in fifty one days. Yeah. 
it will traverse four states and two countries two countries correct four states is incorrect because it will traverse through <coughs> sorry five countries uh, five states up bihar jharkhand west bengal and assam theek hai up bihar jharkhand west bengal and assam are the five states and the rest of the two are correct which means option c option c will be the correct answer <coughs> now let's talk about question number 6 which is about investor education and protection fund authority it recently invited comments from all stakeholders to simplify and expedite the claim settlement process and that is why it is in news but this news is not much important from the exam point of view the important part is this authority right since this authority is in news so it's our duty to discuss about to discuss something about this authority so you have to identify incorrect statement about this authority and now let's talk about this authority and then we will come back to the question so the objective of this authority is to promote investor education to promote investors awareness and protection and administer investor education and protection fund there is a fund investor education and protection fund this fund is administered by this authority and this also create awareness among the investors right it is a statutory body which was established under section 125 of the companies act of 2013 right companies act 2013 section 125 theek hai established in the year 2016 by the ministry of corporate affairs which means ip ef the fund is also uh, you know uh, the fund was set up by the ministry of corporate affairs and then the fund was transferred to be administered by ip efa which is this authority it is headquartered in new delhi and these are the functions of this authority number 1 it is entrusted with the responsibility of administration of investor education protection fund number 1 it remakes funds of shares unclaimed dividends matured depo deposits matured debentures etc to the investors and also it promotes awareness among the investors theek okay, hai how they can uh, do good investment how they can save themselves from the uh, uh, you know those, those ponzi schemes right the composition if i talk about the composition so ex officio chairperson is the secretary in the ministry of corporate affairs ceo is the joint secretary in the ministry of corporate affairs and four members are there which includes executive director from rbi and seb who are the ex officio members theek hai ji so i hope <coughs> this news is clear and now let's identify the incorrect statements it is a statutory body established under subsection 5 of section 125 correct it functions under the ministry of finance no the ministry of corporate affairs it is entrusted with the responsibility of administration of ip ef correct uh, finance minister is its ex officio chairperson is that so no secretary in the ministry of corporate affairs so this is incorrect and it was established in 2016 and is headquartered in new delhi jo ki bilkul sahi baat hai so the incorrect statements are 2 and 4 2 and 4 option b 2 and 4 guys will be the correct answer Let's talk about question number seven, which is about the National Startup Awards 2022, and there were various awards which were given to uh, various startups in 17 sectors. So you guys don't have to remember the names of all the winners. Not at all required, right? But what you have to remember, I'll tell you. So the question is, which separate special category was introduced introduced in in this uh, edition of award? So let's talk about it. So winners of National Startup Award 2022 have been announced on the National Startup Day, which was observed on 16th of January, to felicitate the the innovators, the startups, uh, for their contribution in the startup ecosystem and in the society as a whole. Right? <coughs> This was the third edition after 2020 and 2021 edition, and these awards. uh are given have been given by the ministry of commerce and industry headed by piyush goyal right it had invited application across 17 sectors which were sub divided which were divided into sub sectors how many 50 and there were seven special categories these were the 17 sectors which you don't have to remember 
you just have to remember the number of sectors that is how many sectors were there 17 1 7 17 right and you also have to remember the seven special categories there were seven special categories to whom the awards were given right which are these number one women led startup startups creating rural impact campus startup startups innovating for content delivery in indic languages startups working on solution with uh, potential for import substitution innovations for the covid 19 pandemic and startups in the hilly region and northeastern region of india which was included this year this one the startups in hilly regions and northeastern region this category was included in this year's edition now why learning the name of these seven special categories don't try to remember it word by word hoga hi nahi varna try to focus on the keywords like here the keyword is women here the keyword is rural impact here the keyword is campus here the keyword is indic language here the keyword is import substitution here the keyword is covid 19 pandemic here the keyword is hilly regions and northeastern region so if you learn by this way you would be able to recall during the examinations right and yeah, the winning startups uh, were awarded, were given a cash prize of rupees 5 lakh and one incubator and one accelerator were also awarded with rupees 15 lakh each. So there is one incubator and one accelerator. So we can easily remember the name. Which are these? Incubator may center for cellular and molecular platform, Bangalore. And accelerator may there was Cisco launch pad again in Bangalore. All right. So that is all about National Startups Award and now let's come back to the question. So which category was introduced this year? It was startups in the hilly regions and northeastern region of India. Option E is the correct answer. Alright and now let's talk about question number 8. So now the questions are in short which uh, do not need much explanation. But before that if you want to have the PDF of this session you can join this telegram channel. The link is in description. Description mein dekho jaake. And if you want to ask anything related to examination, you can follow me here. From last 10 days, I am not answering to the queries. I'm sorry for that. But don't worry, by the end of this weekend, I'll answer all the queries. Theke? Question number 8. Mission Life, which is Lifestyle for Environment Awareness Program, was recently organized by National Museum of Natural History <coughs> in New Delhi. For youth to mark the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekananda, that was on National Youth Day. NMH, NMNH, which is National Museum of Natural History, is a subordinate office of which ministry? So it is a subordinate office of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, headed by Bhupendra Yadav. Alright. Question number 9. Where will India's first center of excellence in online gaming be set up by the Digital India Startup Hub? through the software technology parks of India. So where will India's first sector of excellence in online gaming be set up? Batao answer. So it will set up in Shillong, which is of course in, which is of course in Meghalaya. All right. Question number 10. This is important. G20 Troika refers to the top grouping within the G20 that consists of the current, previous and the upcoming presidencies. For the first time, this troika is consist of three developing and emerging economies, which are these three troika. So last year, the presidency was with Indonesia. Currently, the presidency of G20 is with India. And the next year, the presidency will be with Brazil. Right. So the question is, uh, this troika uh, comprises India and which of the following two countries? So these are Indonesia and Brazil. One and three option C will be the correct answer. And the last question for today, with which state government NTPC Renewable Energy Limited has signed an MOU for development of floating and ground mounted based renewable energy projects? This is an important question. But this is not the case. Company name, right? Objective of MOU and with which state government the MOU has been signed? So it's Tripura. Option E is the correct answer. Capital is Agartala. All right, so that's it for today's class. I hope all the questions and their explanations are clear. If you have any doubts, you can ask me in the comment section.
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर वॉचिंग गाइज गुड बाय टेक केयर एंड गॉड ब्लेस